Hello and welcome to this week's art tutorial. I'm coming today for to show you week three, which is looking at creating a complementary colour bird painting, like the one behind me here. Um, for this, you're going to need some paper. It could be a sketchbook or loose A4 or A3 paper. It could even be a cardboard box that you've had to tear apart and use. Um, <clears throat> you'll also need a start of acrylic, uh, starter set of acrylic paints or alternatively, you could use colour pencils or oil pastels. Oil pastels actually look really, really lovely when you're doing a picture like this one. Um, if you're doing using the paint, you will also need a set of paintbrushes. Um, and I'm going to be using a flathead paintbrush again and also a rounded paintbrush for uh, this painting today. You'll also need a drawing pencil, rubber and sharpener. OK, so before we start, I wanted to reintroduce you to the colour wheel. Now, I know you guys are all aware of the colour wheel and have used it in your lessons. However, um, because we're going to be looking at complementary colours, I wanted to just remind you of what they are. So complementary colours are the opposite colours to each other on the colour wheel. For example, the opposite colour of yellow is purple. The complementary colour of red is green and the complementary colour of blue is orange, like the picture I've got behind me. So when these two colours get painted together or coloured in together, it makes the colours really, really stand out and pop out in a much more exciting and vibrant way. So it, it, when we're doing a really joyful painting such as this one, um, they're a really, really useful tool to actually be able to use. What I wanted to show you first before we get on with the painting is the painting by Frida Kahlo, which is called Still Life of Parrot and Fruit. And if any of you guys know me or have been in my Key Stage 3 lessons will know that I always try to kind of bring this painting into my lessons. It's actually one of my favourite paintings of all time. I love it. I love how vibrant it is. I love the colour. I love the juice of the fruit. I love the parrot in the background. I love absolutely everything about it. What I think is really interesting about this painting is that Frida Kahlo is really famous for doing uh, autobiographical self-portraits, which are actually quite traumatic and quite, sometimes quite distressing. But when you have a look at her fruit paintings, you really get this joyful side of her. It's a completely different side of her personality through her paint strokes and through the way she paints her, um, does her painting in a way that she does not get through her portraits. Um, and like I said, because of the use of the bold, bright uh, primary and secondary colours, because of kind of how juicy the fruit looks, because of how um, exotic it all is, I think it really gives this lovely, warm, vibrant feeling, which actually really sets you up for your day. If you um, look at a, a really lovely painting at the start of your day, it can really make you feel better um, and really give you help your outlook on life be really, really positive for the entire day. Um, it's just something really, really simple that you could start doing yourselves. I wanted to show you a more contemporary artist as well, an artist called Jim Moyer. Jim Moyer, <coughs> sorry, Jim Moyer, is an artist who also looks at birds, but he looks at them in a much more kind of like simple form. So he kind of really simplifies the shapes and uh, the colors that he uses. He doesn't necessarily always use complementary colors, but he nearly always uses primary and secondary colors and creates these very, like I said, simple forms for his bird paintings. In doing so, it makes it one, easier for us to kind of recreate because it's a really nice simple shape we don't having to worry too much about the shape of our bird and making our bird look too realistic and two it's kind of a really big focus on bold bright wonderful kind of thick color which again really kind of create creates a really kind of luscious feel which makes you, the portrait or the sorry the painting feel much more vibrant and more special i think so what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating our own kind of Jim Moyer inspired bird painting, like the one I've got behind me. So I'm going to stop presenting my screen so you can see this large. OK, so this, like I said, this is um, a painting that I did um, today, actually, uh, in preparation for this. OK, and like Jim Moyer. I have gone for a really, really bold, uh, exotic looking bird. Um, but unlike him, I have gone with my complementary colours. So I've used oranges and then blues in my background. OK, and this is the kind of effect we're going to have with that today. You'll notice that the shape of the bird fills the entire page. And I really want you to try and get that entire page filled with your bird. So you've got a really joyful, kind of exciting um, composition to your picture. But in addition, you'll also notice that the bird isn't a realistic looking bird. And we're not too worried about making our pictures look too realistic. It's all about kind of enjoyment and fun. And it's not about kind of making them look perfect. Um, in fact, the less perfect they are, the more original they look. So I think it's really, really quite a nice idea to do it that way. So I'm going to start off with my um, paper. I'm using A3 paper. And I've got myself actually a four, um, oh, no, it's four H. I'm going to get a four B pencil out. Now, like I said to you before, two B pencils are good um, because they're kind of like a good standard pencil to use. But I'm going to use a four, eight, uh, four B pencil. 
um, because um, I want you to be able to see my marks more clearly on the camera, on the video. And it's just a little bit darker using a 4B than a 2B, okay? Basically, the softer the pencil, the darker the um, textures and tones you get with that mark making. So I'm going to create my own bird shape, and I'm not looking at Jim Moyer's paintings. I'm going to do one completely from the top of my head, okay? You might want to look at Jim Moyer, and that's completely fine because it's quite, like I said, he's, the birds he creates are very, very simple in their form. So that means they're kind of like very simple shapes, not very much tone, um, and very little texture to them in terms of the actual drawing element of it. Um, so you might want to have a look if you feel a little bit underconfident in just going straight away and drawing out kind of like your exotic bird. But I'm going to go straight in there. So my exotic bird, like I said, is going to fill the page. And like the one I did earlier, I'm going to do like a big rounded head because I kind of like that big rounded bird that Jim Moyer did. I'm going to follow my pencil marks down. You can see I'm using my sketching technique that I did last week, okay, when I did the silhouette pictures. Um, so it really enables you if you're doing a sketching technique like this one it's lighter so you can uh, rub it out more easily if you make a mistake but two it means you can self-correct yourself as you're kind of working along in terms of your use of shape so i'm going to follow my bird right down i'm going to add a wing kind of like it's almost like a continuous line drawing where you're not taking your pencil off the page and i'm going to change mine because i had a wing that was going down in my last one i'm going to have this one kind of more like in flight and then more separate from the body going back into my tail. You may notice that my tail in this picture is coming off my uh, page. I think it's much, much better to draw a um, picture that is coming off the page than trying to squash it all in and then distort the shape. So mine is gonna come off the page. I'm now gonna add an eye, okay? So my eye is gonna go here. And it's looking like some kind of like weird narwhal type thing. Uh, I'm gonna use the, I'm currently on using the triangle. I really like the triangles. I think it looks quite punky. So I quite like the 1970s punk feel that it's going to give my kind of like punky bird. Finally, the beak. And it's really important with the beak that you actually draw the beak from the face of the bird, not like kind of so it's just kind of standing on the side. So you don't want it on the side there, which is what quite a lot of people would do. You want it so it's kind of actually in the bird's face coming out. And you can choose the shape of your beak. I'm just doing like a rounded uh, kind of like a hook nose beak, which I guess is more like a parrot because I want my bird to look really exotic. But again, any type of beak shape is fine and this is you, about you and your painting and your kind of creativity it's not about making something look like a realistic looking bird i'm not looking at kind of like pictures of real birds while i'm doing this um so my bird's going to be standing on a twig and you might have noticed in the jim Moyer paintings that he gets all of his birds kind of standing on a twig and it breaks the page up quite well okay and it allows for like a foreground middle ground and a background so i'm going to have mine standing on a twig here very simple kind of rectangular shape for the legs and they're just a curved twig. I'm not going to draw in branches. I'm not going to draw extra leaves on it because that kind of overcomplicates things. And I want mine to be quite a nice, simple kind of twig. So when I'm going to crack my painting, I'm now going to think about the colours I want to use. And like I said, I want you to kind of think about using complementary colours because it automatically makes your kind of painting pop out. I'm going to start off by doing the background. It's really important to do the background first because when you do the background first, number one, it enables you to kind of uh, correct any errors that you might be um, experiencing much, much easier. OK, but also because you're layering the paint up with the background first coming forward, it makes the kind of texture much more kind of um, three dimensional and allows kind of for, for depth and form to take place. So I'm going to carry on with my blue backgrounds. I really like that kind of like blue um, uh, style. I'm using Cerulean Blue. OK, um, I think I mentioned before I get my paints from the works because they're nice and cheap. OK, that's literally the only reason why the quality isn't great. It's OK. It will do. So I'm happy with it. So I'm going for my cerulean blue. You can see I've used quite a lot of it out. Don't use too much of your paint on the palette in one go because we're going to use nice thick colour. But actually, you don't need to use as much as you probably think you do. And for my background, just like my sunset painting, I'm going to use a flat paintbrush. OK, so a nice flat squared paintbrush. Mine's been in water because I've been washing them, okay, and it's quite wet. So I'm just going to kind of like just dry it a little bit on my hand first. I don't really want to add water to my paint at all. So lots of paint on my paintbrush, loading it up so you get that nice thick texture. And again, horizontal strokes, creating balance and relaxation while you're painting. Straight away at the top following the, the um, same direction as the page.
like I said, avoid doing vertical strokes and painting your backgrounds like this, if at all possible. Vertical strokes will look a bit more like painting a fence when you see those kind of textures. But again, additionally, those horizontal strokes are literally, they're always related to kind of like represent balance and make you feel kind of more relaxed. So having them in a painting, especially for one you're going to like hang up and look at a lot, um, really kind of like helps with a positive outlook. I'm layering up my textures. You might even see, I don't know if you can see on the video, there's actually kind of thick layer of paint and I'm not even gonna kind of flatten that down. I'm gonna keep the thick layers of paint in my picture today. Following the shape of the bird. Oh, I cut him off. But then going back to the horizontal brush strokes. You see my paper's a little bit bent there, that's because I've been using up my old uh, painting pads. Now my pack, my um, picture is getting a bit weighed down because that's how much paint I'm using. That's the reason why you can see it kind of bending out of the frame. That's literally because of the thickness of the paint I'm using. I've got a little bit of blue on my bird, but I'm not even too upset or worried about it. I'm not going to kind of, this is all about kind of enjoyment and like exploring using the paint or using oil pastel. Like I said, oil pastel would be really good with this because um, you get really nice thick textures and thick use of color with those kind of like really thick, greasy oil pastels. Um, but you do have a bit more control with your actual painting. In terms of Jim Moya, he actually uses um, acrylic pens, which are basically these kind of thick kind of, they look a bit like felt tips, but then when you use them, they're it's more like paint and they're kind of acrylic pens, acrylic paint pens. And um, you can get them in places like Hobbycraft. I don't think never works to them. Um, and they're quite expensive, which is why I'm not using them today. But I should really go out and get some because I do love them. more paint. Again, horizontal strokes, following the shape of the bird and then back into horizontal again. Don't worry too much about those edges of the bird because I'm going to go over that with a big, thick, black outline at the end. And therefore, all of those kind of like little inadequate, um, inadequate bits are going to kind of like get covered up in black paint. Following all the way down. Don't forget the little bit in between the legs. If you've done legs, make sure you get that little bit as well. I forgot last time I had to kind of go back into it. This bit here. Filling in all the background of that nice, thick acrylic paint. And then going back over the top to get back those horizontal brush strokes. When you're doing a painting like this, it's actually so relaxing and it's so enjoyable to do because you're not worried about making it look perfect. It's not about people judging you or about people thinking about like making like a particular kind of grade or anything like that. It's all about just enjoying what you're doing.
one up into the body of my bird. I kind of have that green as a separate part. And then back into those horizontal of mark making. And then the final bit down this end here. Back into the horizontal. Keeping the balance, keeping the relaxation. Okay. So I'm, I've done the twig which separates the kind of two parts of the background. For this part of the background, I'm literally not going to do too much different. I'm just going to add um, probably a little bit of green this time, I think. I did white last time. I'm going to add a little bit of um, green. So to do that, I'm just going to use a little bit of yellow. And like I did with the back, uh, the uh, sunset, I'm going to mix my paints on the palette. I mean, on the uh, paper, not on the palette, sorry. Okay, so you kind of get a mixture of the blue and the yellow just coming through. So it's still kind of a blue, but it's kind of like a more greeny blue with hints of yellow in. Getting all that vibrant color. Back in with my more blue and yellow. And then going back horizontally. You might notice I've increased the amount of yellow that I've started using, so it's getting a really kind of vibrantly kind of bright green now into my painting. Just all these like really just happy kind of positive, bright color, block colors. That's kind of what I'm trying to create. So now I've done the background, I'm gonna go onto the bird. And like I said, I'm gonna use complementary colors. So these are gonna be all oranges, okay? Um, just at different kind of ways of creating oranges. Now on my other one, which I've got over here, I kind of created a sex, like a section part. So like I had a darker area and then a lighter area. And I'm probably going to do something similar here just because it breaks up the use of color and also just makes, I don't know, just makes it kind of, I think more enjoyable. I think it's more, it's nicer to do. Right, so I'm going to go revert to a rounded brush this time. Okay, so I'm going to use my rounded brush and I'm going to get my yellows and my reds mixed together to make an orange. Okay, so I'm going to get my yellow and red paint. You see I'm using beautiful old plastic plates. These are my old children's plates. And this is just an ice cream tablet. Again, really, really kind of cheap and easy to use. So red and yellow to make my orange and i'm going to start off by doing my darker orange first i think so this is going to be more kind of a really kind of deep orange really bright orange first things first i'm going to separate my kind of sections off again i'm going to do like a big kind of circular sweep here you might want to do this in pencil first you're more than welcome to okay i'm going to do a big circular sweep there which kind of is cutting off the kind of head from the body of the bird and now straight in with my orange following that sweep okay so the whole direction of my paintbrush is no longer horizontal but it's actually following the sweep of the bird in the same kind of kind of method so it's with thick paint textured paint but just sweeping motions and i'm gonna do it quite quickly i'm gonna do it quite speedily i like that kind of express approach you don't have to be at a painting for hours and hours to make it look really kind of vibrant and exciting. Following the direction. As I start to paint nearer to the background, because the background's not dry, I'm going to get blues in my background and I'm just going to live with that. Okay, you can decide. You can either wait for your background to dry and have a completely clear, nice um, orange bird, or you can use your background to then start adding the tiniest bit of tone into your bird. Because my background's blue, tiniest bit of blue into my bird 
isn't going to hurt it. Add in the details of the tail. When I say details, I mean the shape is not really too detailed at all. And again, not too worried about the lines around the bird because I'm going to go over it in black. Into the wing now. Following the wing round, changing the direction of my brush slightly. It's a bit too red. And then bring that dark a bit back into an orange. Making sure there's no white areas. You don't really want the white areas. I actually prefer the blue smudged into the orange than leaving it white. I think it's a better effect. I'm actually going to bring it in a bit more there. And then going back finally onto that original curve just to make it a bit less muddy, I guess. That's a good term. Okay, so I'm now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the lighter part. So I'm going to make a lighter orange. I'm going to try and make a kind of more brownie orange than um, I did before, just so it kind of like is quite different. So to do that, I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of blue to my or, or, already orange that already exists. So I've got orange already there on the palette. And literally just a teeniest, like tiny, not even a drop of paint of blue. I'm just going to add to that to make it more of a brownie colour. And I'm going to go back in following again the shape, the rounded curved shape of my bird. Because it's still got the hints of orange, it still really works as a complementary colour. Now this bit here, it's quite thick paint on the background, it's definitely going to bring the blue into that bird. And again, it's up to you if you look like that or not. If you don't like it, you can use a hairdryer to dry it, or you could just uh, wait for it to dry. Blending it around the curve. Going to the other side of the triangle. Filling that area in, making it more curved. Again, I've not used the water once, so thick luscious paint and like i said to you oil pastel pressing really really firmly with that oil pastel so you're getting those lovely kind of textures that oil pastel give you but over things like your triangle you will get a lot more kind of de definition if you do use oil pastel Of just coming up to the beak. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the little bits, okay, the kind of finishing touches to my exotic bird. So I'm going to do the triangu triangular bit, I'm going to do the beak, and I'm going to do the legs, and obviously the eye as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the beak first. I'm going to use a red, a bright red for my beak to make it stand out from the orange, but still in keeping kind of with similar kind of 
uh, parts of color because obviously red and orange are very similar in their colors. So I'm obviously washing my paintbrush. Now, because I want to keep with that kind of thick kind of texture, I'm going to just dry my paintbrush. I've got an old rag that I use, old cleaning cloth, um, just to make it a bit drier. And then obviously a bit more red paint on my palette. This is called Studio Red, the one I'm using. Okay. So I'm going to do my beak. And again, I can see that I've used very thick paint here for my blue. So I know straight away that when I add the red paint, it's probably going to mix in with the blue. And it, again, that's kind of up to you to you to decide if you want that effect or not. I, like I said, I don't overly hate it. I don't mind it. For today, when I'm doing it straight away, like on camera, I'm going to have to live with it anyway. You guys can decide whether you want that or not. But there was white there, so I'm just going right into that blue. So, like I said, I'd rather a bit of blue than any white showing. And this one's got quite a nice long beak, much longer than the other one, I think. Longer and thinner. So, while I've got the red out, I'm just going to add some red to the feet as well. I'm going to give him some red feet. You can choose what colour you give him the feet. Obviously, it's your exotic bird. You can decide. He could have brown feet or black feet it's kind of really up to you i really like the red standing out as kind of a nice vibrant color so that's why i'm going for red i say the feet they're more like legs aren't they put the feet into them if you want to you don't have to really now I'm going to do my branch and the triangular bit the same shade of brown um, because I really like the idea of, of the brown in the uh, branch to be balanced with the brown at the top. So that's what I'm going to do. Again, I'm washing my paintbrush out. And to make a nice brown, you need your blue, your red and your yellow all together. Okay, because brown's a tertiary colour. So I'm going to start off, because I'm doing a dark brown, I'm going to start off with my blue, adding a bit of red in there, which gets you a kind of like muddy purple that I'm making, I'll show you. A little muddy purple. And then a tiny bit of yellow to brown it up. My uh, brown's looking on the green side, so I'm just going to add a bit more red, and just a tiny bit of red. So we can make it a bit warmer, a bit less green. What I'm doing now is just getting rid of the excess paint on my um, paintbrush onto the palette, just so I've got a thinner amount without putting it in the uh, water pot. And then I'm just twirling my brush back around. I don't think you see that. I'm twirling my brush around so I get a point to my brush. I'm going to do the branch first because I think it's going to be easier. And this time I'm going to go back to those horizontal lines. So keeping in line with kind of this harmonious balance feel. And the branch really does help with balance as well, because obviously the bird is even is balancing on this branch. So it, the whole kind of like sense of balance, is just a really good feeling to have. So keep it going with the horizontal lines too. And because it's brown, I'm mixing the brown over the top of the blue and green um, background and it's also going to not matter too much about my red feet because there's red and blue and brown what I'm actually going to do. I'm going to finish painting this brown bit and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back over the top of the red feet. Now like I was saying to you before, do the background first and then do the foreground. I'm 
definitely going to do that again with my uh, red because I think it will just add the texture, make it just a bit more three dimensional, give it more form. Okay. Well, I've still got the brown, I'm going to do my brown triangle. Following the direction of the triangle in my paint strokes, brush strokes. Making sure it's gone a bit longer because there's a bit of white there and I just don't want the white. If I've gone longer, I'm going to go a bit thicker too. Around the eyeball. Getting that corner back so it's more triangular. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my paintbrush out again and just get give myself a bit more of the red on those feet. I might even add a bit more of the orange to them, this side of the bird. And then a bit more of the brownie orange down here. Well, I could see it was getting a bit patchy and I didn't really like it. Blending the paint over the top of the already drying acrylic. The good thing with acrylics is it does dry really quickly. If you're using oils, it wouldn't dry for days and days and days and days. Okay, finishing touches then. I'm going to do the bird's eye and I've done my bird's eye yellow, but you can choose whatever colour you want to use. Okay, for your bird's eye. If you've got a set of paintbrushes, I'd use a smaller one. I don't have a small one on me, so I'm just using my uh, number six again. And I'm using the yellow that's already on my palette, so it's kind of like, oh, no, I don't really like that. It's kind of too browny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bit more yellow. Like that brush. Oh, I've got some more yellow on that palette. Got some more yellow on this one. And go over the top and dab it on a bit, because if I don't dab it, it'll blend it too much. Okay, now all I've got to do now is the black outline. And obviously you can do this in a variety of ways. If you've got those acrylic pens, they would be amazing for black outlines. If not, paintbrush, okay? You can use a paintbrush. Like I said, use a thinner one if possible. I haven't got a thinner one. I'm using a, a six today. Bit, bit of black paint. Again, you might find that this works better with your painting dry. I'm going very quickly with my brush strokes. And if I make a mistake and some bits to fatter in some ways and some thinner in others, I don't mind. It's not, it doesn't have to be perfect. And actually, like I said, if we're looking at the Jim Moyer stuff again, his isn't perfect. But it's just giving a bit more definition to a really bold, bright painting. And, all, and also kind of like giving you permission to be artificial and giving you permission. The black outline is so not realistic and so kind of, um, you know, artificial that it gives you this permission that you can be fake with your picture. You can be like, it doesn't have to be real. And it's up to you which other bits you go around with the black outline. You can just stay at doing the body of the bird or you might then decide to do a line down here. Or you might go into the triangle, even though mine's quite dark, so I might just leave that bit. Even the feet if you wanted to. If I go back to my original one, I did the back black outline. I'll put some blue paint on it or something. Um, that's a bit annoying, I'll sort that out later. Um, I did the black outline once the rest of the painting was dry, so it was a lot more kind of smooth. Doesn't matter really though, it's like completely up to you. Anyway, 
I hope you've really enjoyed doing your bird painting with me today. I do really love these paintings. I think they're fun, they're vibrant, they're, you know, they're not perfect, but no one's perfect. So I think it's, you know, just a really cool way of like making fun artwork and just really enjoying yourself with your use of materials rather than having to be perfect all the time. Anyway, um, that's me for this week. And hopefully I'll see you guys all soon. Bye.